saw this off and they saw that off and off and off. Mm -hmm. And they got a new form. That's what Kepler did. And he found that was a number of new forms that no one had ever discovered. And how he did that was to cut the corners off. Mm -hmm. I didn't cut any corners off. <laughs> if I cut the corners off this, it looks like this. So in other words, if I cut the corners off, this should fit in there, huh? And it does. The corners touch the face right in the middle. Exactly, right in the middle. So if I cut this corner off, and this corner off, and this corner off, I get that white shape, which is an octahedron. Now I should be able to take this cube and put it back into there. These are the characteristics that the platonic forms have. Other forms can't do this. So I put it back into that. <laughs> there it is again. Same size cube. Now this can go on eternity. It can go all the way to the center and all the way to the periphery. Bigger, 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 smaller, smaller, smaller. So this is another characteristic of the platonic forms, which are, which are just fantastic. Here is the same form with the, with the icosahedron in it. The Q-tips one I just made. And there's a cube in there, too. Yeah, this is, this is cool stuff. <laughs> this is pyrite. It's a perfect cube. And when this does a transforming into another form, it turns into a dodecahedron. This is also pyrite. These are metal, stones, crystals out of the earth. Things perfect. Here's the Chinese do this. They take coins and they put them together. Here are cubes with circles. They're all made with circles. Because the circle will go inside the triangle or the square perfectly. So all of the forms that you just saw that were triangles can be all circles. Circle, circle, circle. And that's why the Chinese put these together. And they're really neat. They're platonic forms. Now what happens is the cube, when it transforms into a uh, icosahedron, a dodecahedron, look what it does. There are cubes that are combined into each other. Look at that. That thing is just beautiful, how those are combined. It's transforming. It takes five cubes to make a dodecahedron. All right, let's see uh, what I can do about catching up here. OK, not yet. <laughs> the one thing I decided to do was to work on 7. So I studied the platonic forms a lot. And I found out that if I do this with 7, <coughs> nothing works. <laughs> really? That doesn't, nothing touches. To show you that, you see how they don't touch? I can't use this method. This method is not working on what I want to find out. I can't do this. So what I had to do was reverse. And so what I did was this. I took seven sticks or seven Q-tips and a piece of mud. And I aligned them all the way around like this and put them into the center. You know, not, not like this, not going from the outside, which doesn't touch. I went from the center and stuck these in. And so uh, here they are going in. And here is seven sticks in mud. <laughs> <laughs> and here it is. It's my first thing. OK, so when I connected all the corners, you know, I, I was going to get my seven-sided form. But what happened was it turned into 10. 
So here it is. I took the first one, I connected the corners. See how I connected the corners? Okay, and then I connected more. I got one, two, three, four, and of course I only need three more, and I got 10. <laughs> this isn't working. <laughs> it doesn't work. So uh, I, I tried all kinds of stuff. I looked in the, in the history books, I looked in the geometry books, I looked in the science books, and this is what I found. First off, I found that what they did is they took a cube and they took a side off it. That's seven. Uh, not quite what I want. And I also took this a piece of butter, cut five sides off it, and the top and bottom. You know, I, I just wasn't happy with these things. I wanted to, you know, something different. So here's another one that I found that, um, whoops, I got one here. No, I don't. There's this one. I cut off six, and the bottom is the seventh one, which is really six. But there are six around here, so this is one, and six makes seven. No, I was interested more in what these have done. I wanted equal surfaces. You know, I didn't want just this, you know, these goofy things. So what I did was I took seven floaters I found, and I stuck them in, seven of them, into a piece of clay, and I got this. So it looks like this, and then you put them, uh, take them apart, and then there's this form. But none of that worked out. So this method helped me to think a little bit better because I realized that there were gaps. Now here are the gaps. See this part right here? That's because this ball and this ball come together. They don't, they, they can't go together because the other ones are holding it apart. So I saw these gaps here, and sure enough, I, look, I looked into the geometry books and I said, nope, seven can't be done because it has gaps. And sure enough, it has gaps. So I went to my artistic training, which is m where my training is, and I took a ball of clay and I dug out seven holes and laid, up, laid the little piles of clay. So I had seven of them and they were equal. And when I came to the gap, I don't care. I don't care about gaps. Artists don't care about gaps. I just kept carving. And when I kept carving, I got this shape. And there it is, original shape, the original one. And it has seven cavities. But one has three, and this one has three, but this one has four. Oh man, there's one, another problem. But you know, after a while I thought, you know, three and four, seven. So actually it was pretty good. <laughs> really, I, no, that's how I was thinking. So uh, I made a big one of these uh, because I used a hoop here. This hoop right here, I put it around the form and then I put these threaded screws in here into these holes and enlarged it into hula hoops. And I enlarged that hoop into hula hoops and I made a big one. Here's the big one. Uh, some of you have seen this from the last time. And what I did was to try to find out what these shapes are. Oops. What these shapes are here. Uh, and there's one, two, three. And then here's one, two, three, four. See how it worked? Okay, so I filled it up with plaster of Paris. I took plaster of Paris and I poured them into each cavity and took it out and did it seven times. And I made this form which is in the back, that sculpture. What I found out was that these right here won't bend, but these, these were bent a little bit. So what I did is I straightened them out. There was a bent one, I straightened that one out. And then I got the form. And that form is this one. That's the seven-sided form, and here it is. It's the first seven-sided form ever that has minimum surfaces, not minimum surfaces, but it has equal surfaces. So the area of this one and the area of this one are almost identical and very, very close. So that was really great. What I decided to do with that is to find out where this is in the earth. Where is this in manifestation? So one of the things I, I saw here is that I noticed that uh, what they did in the past, they took a cube and they started cutting the corners off, just like I said before. And there's this guy. Remember how I showed you that in the plastic? 
I did the same thing. I tried to find out where these, uh, this form here that you saw, I took the center of the face, the center of this face, the center of this face, right in the center, then I connected those points together just like they did, which is this one, same thing. I took the center of the face, the center of this face, and then connected together to see what's inside. I want to know what's inside this form. Not just what this is, but what's inside it. Something you can't see. See, this, was, this form was brought in. I didn't see this form. Okay? So this was brought in before memory. This is why we have to stop copying. Because there are things that we need to bring in that aren't here. Okay, so I did the same thing. I took the form and I took the center of each of, of the uh, polygons and I found a new form. There it is. That's a new form. Did the same thing again. See how I took all the little points? And I got a cube right in the middle of this. Right in the middle of this form is a cube. And this guy over here shows that cube so that, uh, and I'll show it to you later, but this form here has the cube in it exactly the size that the geometry is telling me. Now, would ever think that an asymmetrical, weird looking shape like this would have a perfect cube in it? It's crazy. So, during this time, I saw a drawing that Ruta Steiner did that. was so interesting to me because I noticed that this shape here and this shape right here and then the sticks and mud. <laughs> what the heck is going on here? Because this, was the, this is the way I found this thing. So uh, what I did is I sent away for this lecture here and I found out that he said that inside the earth there was somewhat of a pyramid. There was somewhat of a tetrahedron and he used the word a tetrahedron. It was a tetrahedron inside. So that really got me. So uh, what I did is I decided to see where the tetrahedron hit in the sphere, the earth, and uh, uh, where he said uh, that these three points were, were not at, uh, at this latitude, which is 19.47. The latitude, if I put my form into a sphere, was up higher. So here's another, they took the octahedron, this guy in here in the middle, this one here, put it inside the sphere. So you know, all these people are trying to put these tetrahedrons in here, why don't I put mine in there too? I mean, everybody else is doing it. <laughs> so here's another guy, look what he did, he put an icosahedron around it, and then inside he put another form and tried to find out what's going on. So I said, okay, let's look what other people have done. Now this guy here, he took two tetrahedrons, I put them together, they call it Merkaba. That's a big important, not important, but it's a, it's a popular thing going on. Put it in a sphere. Then they stellated it outside the sphere. I saw that. Here is the Russian. The Russians here are working on it. They put an a, a icosahedron inside the world, inside the Earth. And then here is how they, I showed you how the platonic forms work. And then here is another one with the tetrahedron inside the Earth. Okay, fine. So it's my turn. So what I did is where Rudolf Steiner said that the tetrahedron was in the earth, he named these points right here. That doesn't work. So enough of that. So what I did is I noticed that when he did his drawing here, uh, this is a tetrahedron. Oops, that's a tetrahedron, but uh, this is, is too pointed. It's, it's not the... It's an extended tetrahedron. And if I go back to here, I'll show you where I drew these right here. Here's the tetrahedron, and there's the drawing that Rudolf Steiner did. Ah, that's looking better to me. So I did that. I took the tetrahedron, and I took what he drew, 